Well, hello, challengees, and welcome to the Always Better Challenge Show, the show designed to help you take steps today for a better and happier tomorrow. I'm your humble host, Joe Bedford, and I want to start the show today a little different. I want to talk for a moment about Stitcher. You can hear my show on Stitcher. Stitcher is radio on demand. You can download the free app today on the App Store. Listen anytime, anywhere. Stitcher is an award-winning free app that lets you listen to all your favorite shows, plus discover from 65,000 plus news, entertainment, and sports shows. You can create custom playlists. There are over 20,000 shows to discover. And you can rate and review this show on Stitcher. It's available for iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. It's in over 4 million car dashboards on demand and on the go. No downloading, no syncing, no wasted memory. You can stream your favorite podcast. If you don't have Stitcher, download it free today at Stitcher.com or in the App Store. Now, I'm not affiliated with Stitcher as far as I don't get anything if you use it or anything like that, but my show is on there. And really, I just think I'm a new fan of it. I downloaded it uh, this morning myself for the first time, and I, I really think I like the interface. So uh, I think I'm a, a new fan, perhaps. Um, I'm going to continue to use it and see what I think. I've used iTunes before, but I'm going to give this a try. So as always, I'm going to start the show with a quote slash topic introduction today. Today's quote comes from Linda Breen Pierce. I almost said Price. Pierce. Simplicity involves unburdening your life and living more lightly with fewer distractions that interfere with a high quality life as defined uniquely by each individual. So today we're going to talk about Minimalism, really, I, I, I'm, in my mind I'm thinking minimalism slash organization, but we're really going to talk mostly about the idea of leading a minimalist life. And this is something that I do and that I feel like has been very beneficial in my life. Um, the nice thing about it is, and we'll talk about this obviously as we go along, but there are... Um, What's the word I'm wanting to use? I, there's a continuum with minimalism. In other words, there are, you know, it means something different to everyone. There are all different... You can take it as far as you want, I guess is the idea that I'm, that I'm trying to get at here. But I've taken it to a pretty good point and a point, like I say, that I feel like has benefited my life. And it's something I'm always constantly trying to even move forward with and uh, improve a little bit. So what are some of the benefits, first of all, of living a minimalist lifestyle? Before we get into the how-to, what, you know, what good, you know, how is it going to make your life better and happier to embrace minimalism? Well, the first obvious way is that it can help you cut down on your spending. Obviously, if you want to have less stuff, you would buy less stuff. If you buy less stuff, you have more money. So that's a definite easy benefit right there. The second one is probably the biggest one for me personally. Um, all the stuff you have, think about how much time you put into maintaining that stuff, cleaning that stuff, organizing that stuff, repairing that stuff. It, 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 it's a, it can be a big burden. And for me, this has been the biggest advantage to me is that having a lot of stuff takes a lot of time. It's, it's easy to, be, to feel like almost like your stuff is your master rather than the other way around where you're spending, you know, you've got to spend all this time and energy and distraction on worrying about all the stuff that you have in, in different ways. So to me, that's a, that's a good sort of tip right there as far as you know, how to maybe get started with minimal minimizing or, you know, is that if you, if there's something in your life that you find a lot, that you spend a lot of time and stress worrying about, worrying about, you know, oh, you know, how I need to organize that, you know, maybe it's an area in your house or, or it's a certain type of thing that you have in your house. But when you find yourself spending a lot of time and worry over that thing, maybe it's time to think about eliminating or pairing that way back because you know think about that if that's gone 
you don't have to worry about it anymore, right? That's it's gone. It's done. So that's a that like I say to me, I think this is the biggest benefit that I've gotten out of it. I've you know I've I've done decluttering or minimalizing it at, at minimizing. I, I can't decide how I want to say that minimalizing minimizing. Um, I've done that at different times in my life to different degrees, and I can think of you know different times that I did it, and just the 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 great feeling. It just felt so light and free is the only word that comes to mind and so you know that's why i'm a that's why i'm excited about it and passionate about it and wanted to share it with you today another advantage and we could look at this a couple of different ways um but you need if you have less stuff you need less space so that might mean that you um, can have a smaller home that would be one way of of going at it or you can keep your larger home, but you're going to have more space in it. And, you know, it's not going to be as jam-packed and as cluttered. And it will hopefully feel more open and enjoyable. Um, this, just sort of going off on a little aside here. Um, as I say, I've tried to embrace minimalism to a certain point. I'm not going to say I'm the most, you know, minimalist person in the world or that I'm living some austere Spartan existence or anything like that. But I've tried to do it. And I have seen that when folks come over to visit my home for the first time, I, I've seen this just so many times that it's made an impression on me where folks walk in and look around and they immediately say something and they don't say anything like, oh, your house is so minimal, minimalistic or anything or Spartan or anything like that. They don't say anything like that, but they say something like, oh, your house feels so welcoming or you know, open or calming or relaxing or, or words like that. And I love that. And, you know, I personally think it's because of the minimalism. They, they have not said that. I, I mean, they've never said, oh, well, that's why it feels this way. But I think there's a lot to that. When you go into a cluttered space or even just a space where there's a lot of stuff, it can feel there's a certain tension to that, I think, that you feel. Personally, that's my opinion. And so I think when you come into a place that's simple and clean and not cluttered, I think people just automatically and naturally find that welcoming and relaxing. So I found that to be a very interesting benefit. Another benefit, and to me that, you know, this is a big part of it because I don't want folks to think that I'm telling you to, you know, give up all the stuff you love or anything like that. And, you know, nothing could be further from the truth, but it's get rid of the stuff. You know, I use this phrase so often that no longer serves you, that is not making your life better, that may actually even be making your life worse with worry and worrying about organizing it and whatnot. So the idea that I love about minimalism is that, for want of a better way to put it, it makes it easier to find and enjoy the stuff that you do love, if that makes any sense. The image, I have this one image that jumps to my mind, and this was uh, someone's home that I was in. And they had a lot of family photos. Now, nothing wrong with family photos, but they had this uh, table, and they had all these family photos on it. But it was a, it was a mess. <laughs> there, there were too many of them. And so because of there being too many of them, it took away from the importance, for want of a better word, of any of them. Does that make sense? You see what I'm trying to say? Like, you know, if there'd just been one or two or three, those would have really had an impact. But when there's a million, it's just a mess. And you, it's almost like you can't see any of the pictures. It's, you just see a big mess. So that's, that's my... You know, the thing, another thing that I love so much about being more minimalist is it makes you, it makes it easier to enjoy and appreciate the items that you do have and that, and that the items that you keep are truly the items that you love the most and that mean the most to you. And so I think that is a huge benefit. Um, so I've already talked, I guess, about the, the feeling of freedom that I've experienced when I've done decluttering at different times in my life, you know, because the thing is it weighs you down, I think, more than you may know. And it's almost like I didn't, I, I was surprised by how great it felt to, you know, get rid of some of that stuff. 
I, I've also heard the phrase that physical clutter begets mental clutter, and I really think that there is something to that. You know, like I say, you've, you may not be so aware of it, but there's sort of this ongoing stress of worrying about that stuff in the back of your mind. Oh, when am I going to get to cleaning out that garage or that basement or that attic or that drawer in the kitchen or whatever it is, you know, for you. Um, another benefit and because this is something that I went through myself, I'm not going to rat out who it was, but a f close family member passed away. And this close family member definitely had not embraced the minimalist lifestyle. And so, so much stuff was left behind, stuff that hadn't, that decisions hadn't been made about. Boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff. So what happened? Those of us who were left behind, we had to go through that. So another benefit, and I hope this doesn't seem too morbid a you know, thing to, to say, but you know, to me, I like the idea that, you know, when my time comes and I pass away, I don't want to leave a bunch of, a big job that somebody has to go through all my stuff and figure out what to do with it. I mean, the family member that I'm talking about, I'm talking, we literally, we literally found junk mail from the 1970s that was, that were in boxes and that had never gotten discarded. So there's another benefit for you there. So hopefully that's enough about the benefits. Um, these are you know, definitely benefits that I've seen in my life. And so I wanted to share with you and give you something to think about. And just, you know, if this is something that you might want to try. Um, and as I said, the nice thing about it is you can do it to any level you want. You can do it a little, you can do it a lot. You can do it a little at a time. And that's something that we'll talk about as we go too. So now let's get into the how-to. Let's get into the nuts and bolts. Let's take into the actionable advice and tips that I can give you on how to go about living a more minimalist lifestyle. So, and I've already said the first thing here, which is that it, you know, minimalism means something different to everyone and you can make it your own. You can take it as far as you want. You can do it in stages. Then you can decide if you want to go further. It's an ongoing process anyway, I think. I mean, I know for me it is. It's not like you know, I did minimalism one time and then I'm done with it and it's set. I'm constantly trying to look for things that maybe, you know, it's time to, to pare down or, or time to eliminate or time to get rid of. So the obvious, I, I think, first step with minimalize, minimal, minim, I can still can't decide how to say it, minimalizing, minimizing, minimizing, we're going to go with that is that you want to start clearing out the clutter in your life, in your home. And, you know, some first steps of this, I would hope, are easy. Um, you know, because one step is to just go through and just find stuff that you can just flat out just throw, just throw away. It's just garbage. It's just not useful. Uh, it's broken. It's in disrepair. It's something that you have no need for and you don't think anyone else would have any need for. Um, I'm just trying to think of examples, you know, p extra parts of appliances that you don't have anymore. I mean, that type of thing, you know, hopefully that would be an easy, you know, yeah, let's just get rid of that. Let's just throw that away. Um, another, the next category might be things that you might want to, and I, I guess these next two could be kind of the same category or, or overlap or whatever, or depends on how you want to go about it. Uh, things you can donate and things you might want to sell. Um, and the thing here too is you got to keep in mind the, the balance. What I mean by that is, you know, I, one of the nice advantages, and I didn't go into this, I talked about saving money, but I didn't even talk about the money that you can make from selling items. And so you can bring, you know, actually bring it, bring some money back in, some cash back in to the household that way. Um, so that's definitely a nice benefit too. However, you know, for all of us, you have to balance time and money. Um, you could, you know, sell every single item that you want to get rid of, but depending on how many items you have, depending on how much time you have, that might be such a huge task that you would never even want to get started on trying to undertake it. It might take you years. Um, so that's, 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 that's a decision to make there. What do I want to donate? What do I want to sell? What do I want to maybe still just dispose of? 
Um, and you can, you know, you can sell, but just keep in mind that that does take some time. Um, as far as how to sell things, there's lots of different ways you can do that nowadays. Craigslist is certainly an option. You want to be very careful about meeting strangers. You know, you probably don't want them to come to your home. Maybe meet them in a public place. Um, Facebook is a new one. Facebook Marketplace, I believe they call it. I probably think that's even better than Craigslist now. I've had some very good results on that here lately. eBay is another option. Usually there you're going to have to ship the item, so keep that in mind if it's something that's going to be extremely difficult to pack and ship. But that's another option. I'm going to link below, I've talked about this before, for clothes. And this was something that I discovered from someone else's recommendation. I was so glad I did. We had so many clothes that we wanted to get rid of and couldn't decide how we wanted to go about it. We hated to throw them away because there were so many of them. They were so valuable. And, you know, we did donate some, but we, you know, really were <laughs> trying to get some of the, you know, some cash flow going too. And we're hoping for a way to sell some of these items because they were nice, you know, expensive items. And, we tried some different things and it was just so labor intensive and we had so much that none of those were working for us. So finally we discovered swap.com. Now before I go any further, I'm going to mention that the link, if you do click on that, um, I do get a small credit for that. So full disclosure on that, but I am a, a user and a believer in swap.com, used it, uh, sent several boxes of merchandise in. Now you're not going to make as much as you would make on eBay or TradeZ or Poshmark or, you know, some of these other sites, but those are so much more labor intensive where you have to, you know, take each item, take all these pictures of it, describe it, et cetera. There's so much work. With swap.com, you just take your items, you put them in a box and you send them off. That's it. They do all the photographing and creating the listings and all that stuff. So for, for us, that trade-off was more than worth it, that we didn't probably make as much money as we would have if we'd sold each item individually. But you know that would have been a full-time job for us for the next 20 years probably if we had gone that route. So I'm a big believer in that. So selling the items, a good way to get rid of some of the items and to get some cash coming in, but just be aware of the time expense that you might want to run into. Now, uh, the next few things I'm going to talk about, I don't know if these are so much how-tos as these are sort of, I don't know if I want to say tips or maybe traps to avoid. So the first trap, the first thing that makes it difficult when you're trying to declutter is just-in-case syndrome. Oh, well, I've got this item or items and I haven't used it and it's been sitting in this drawer or this box or this whatever for five years. But just in case, maybe I should keep it. Maybe one day I'll wish I had it. You know, that, that type of thinking. That type of thinking makes decluttering very difficult. And my advice to you is to just bite the bullet. Uh, when in doubt, get it out. Um, I've been pretty ruthless with you know you know some of my decluttering in that I'm like no I haven't used it I haven't used it and have I ever regretted getting rid of something almost never almost never I mean the percentage is so small yeah there actually have been, and this is the other thing people are concerned about oh you know I'll get rid of it and then I'll decide I want it and I'll go buy it again and I have done that a couple of times I have bought replacements for things I got rid of but almost never and it was still worth it in that having being able to have that ruthless attitude made the men the cutting down decluttering so much easier so I don't regret that and that is my advice to you you know be pretty ruthless when in doubt get it out don't keep it just in case besides the other part of that is how many times have you kept something just in case and then you kept so much stuff that when you actually could have used the thing that you kept just in case you couldn't find it anywhere couldn't remember where it was because you had too much stuff so there's there's that part of it too um, another trap with decluttering and this one's tricky I know I know but I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it a little bit and I'm gonna give you one piece of advice and that's memorabilia sentimental items those are so hard for folks sometimes and they've got boxes and boxes and boxes of you know photographs uh, artwork the kids did in second grade and you know all all the souvenirs all that type of stuff I can't remember where I 
first got this advice, but I, I got this from somewhere and it really stuck with me and it has helped me so much. It's the idea that the item that you have is not the actual memory itself. Okay, because that's the thing. So often we associate the item with some great memory that we cherish. You'll still have the memory. You don't need the item to have the memory. So if you find the ticket stub from the 1982 World's Fair, you still got the memory of going to the fair. Are you really going to get that much more enjoyment out of sitting there and looking at that at that ticket? I mean, I'll just do that out there as obviously a, a, an example. But and, and again, the other point is that if you've got these boxes and boxes of stuff, are you really enjoying that in a box in the attic anyway? I mean, what happens? You get it down once every 10 years, probably because you're trying to declutter, and you're like, oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? And then it goes back in the box. So it's like you're not honoring that, that, mem that memory. Uh, now, of course, and I'm not saying get rid of all your memorabilia, but it's, it's that same concept that I talked about before where you keep the you keep the things that are really important and that you really love and then you know maybe try to display those in some way if you love the ticket from the world's fair you know make a little shadow box or something like that you know so and that's the advantage of cutting down on the number of items that you have is that you can really honor and enjoy and appreciate the ones that you do keep um, photos we'll talk about a little bit later because I'm going to talk about some other techniques that we can use in the age of technology. So another point I want to make about minimalism, because I want you to think of this, or I'm hoping that I'm encouraging you to think of this as a, as a fun, positive thing, not like, oh, I'm getting rid of stuff, you know. It's a fun, positive thing. And another little sort of mind set thing that I like to do that makes it enjoyable for me is I don't think about, oh, I'm getting rid of a bunch of stuff. I think about, hey, I'm getting rid of stuff that no longer serves me as well as it once did so that I can bring in fresh new stuff that's exciting and that does serve me. So that's, you know, that's a fun way of looking at it as well. And that's certainly something you can do. Yeah, get rid of a bunch of the stuff that's not serving you as well and, and get some new. Um, another sort of tip or trick or idea that you can keep in mind here um, once you've done a good decluttering is that every time you think about buying something or getting something new or bringing something into the home, sort of think to yourself, okay, well, I'm bringing this new thing in. Is there an old thing that I can let go? So that way you're sort of maintaining the same level of declutter for want of a better word. So, you know, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to get, I bought a new suit. So maybe an old suit, it's time for it to go away. So, Another point I want to make before we wrap up is the idea that we've talked about physical clutter or physical minimalism, but there are other areas of our life where we might want to consider, you know, implementing this same mindset, this same strategy, these same ideas. Um, the first one that comes to mind is in our finances, especially if you have debt, especially consumer debt. So the idea of being minimalist with what you buy, um, the tip, the big tip I'd give here is don't go shopping. And by shopping, I mean, I'm not talking about when you go to the store to get something that you need. I'm talking about the idea of just going to look. Because what's going to happen when you look? You're going to find something that you didn't even know you wanted or needed. And now all of a sudden, because you've seen it, you're like, oh, I'd like to have that. So that's a way of uh, using financial minimalism, we'll call it. How about tech minimalism? And this is a tough sell in today's day and age. And for me as well, I'll be the first to admit. But you know, how much time do we spend on our phones, our tablets, our iPads, our computers, our screens, our cell phones, our smartphones, all that stuff? Um, could we, is that an area where we might like to minimize, either minimize our time on those devices or even minimize some of the devices themselves? Hey, they're not cheap, so that's, that's, a, that's a, just something to think about. Probably one of my favorite ones is schedule minimalism. How much time can you free up by removing commitments in your schedule that no longer serve you? And I believe I talked about that a little bit in the time management episode. And that's certainly a good, another good place to, to think about this idea of minimalism. Last, sort of last tip before I wrap up is, and I, talked to, I teased this earlier, is that we can use technology to help us minimize. Um, 
in, if you've got a gazillion books, well, maybe you might want to consider doing going the Kindle route, where you've got those books electronically rather than the actual paper books. The other point I've always made is, you know, you can read books without owning them. You can go to the library, or you can get rid of the books that you've read once. You know, are you really going to read those again? Or if you do, go to the library and read it. You know, that 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 type of thinking, and but also using the technology of the uh, electronic books to help out there. Um, a scanner is another great minimalist tool for getting rid of paper and for photos. And this is something that I've definitely done. I am, and I do have a home business, so I've got you know as much paper as anybody, but I have taken great steps to going as paperless as possible. I've gotten everything paperless that I humanly can. Yeah, that was a big job when I initially set it up, but the ongoing maintenance of it is not. I just I've gotten so used to just scanning stuff as it comes in and, you know, not keeping that paper. Now, we could argue that you don't want your, you know, computer hard drive to be not minimalist as well, but at least there it's a little bit as long as it's well organized, it's at least it's not taking up physical space and you know, I, I've found that works well for me as a solution. You do, you do want it uh, well organized though, so where you can find stuff. If you can't find stuff, it's useless. Um, for photos, and I know some folks I'm not going to convince here, they're in love with the paper photos. I love having the photos digital for a million reasons. They don't take up space. Don't have to worry about them getting lost. Um, so much easier to view, so much easier to share. I've got mine on Google Photos. I can share those with all my family, no matter where they are, and they can look at them whenever they want. I mean, what could be better than that? Again, this was a lot of work setting up, especially when I inher inherited my mom's and grandmother's photos. I did actually decide to spend a little money, because right, again, that would have been a full-time job for me. I did have those uh, digitized by a company. I uh, don't remember which company. I would have given them a shout out down below if I remembered. If I, if I can find that in my notes, I'll, I'll link that down below. But um, that's, that's been great for me. So my pictures all live online. I enjoy looking at them that way more anyway than having to, again, drag some box down from the attic with albums and page through them and don't have to worry about them degrading. I mean, they don't have to worry about it losing them in a natural disaster. I mean, there's just so many advantages, I think, to having the photos um, digitized and, and, as I said, the paper as well. So a few little resources that I wanna throw your way. Um, there is a 30-day minimalism game, which I will link up in the show notes. The website address is theminimalists.com forward slash game. It's just a little silly 30-day challenge if you'd like to see what that is like and maybe think about getting started with cutting down. It starts off easy, but it gets harder. I'll, I'll just go ahead and warn you about that. Um, and a little book that I want to recommend, and I will link this as an affiliate link down below, and that is called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Japanese Art of Decluttering and Organizing, and that is by Marie Kondo. I enjoyed this book very much. There are, I'll just go ahead and say there are some parts of it that are a little woo-woo, for want of a better way of putting it, where she talks about, you know, making your belongings happy. Um, and that, But that's fun. And I enjoyed the book, and I got some really good tips out of it, some tips that I definitely do use. And, and it's a fun read, so I would, I would recommend that book. And you can uh, purchase that from Amazon down below if you would like, and that helps support the show at no additional cost to you. So that is it for today. If you haven't subscribed to the show yet, please do so below. Share it with your friends. Sign up for our free motivational emails at abetterchallenge.com. Keep the questions and comments and feedback coming. Thank you so much for watching the Always Better Challenge show. I'm your humble host, Joe Bedford. Until next time, go out there and minimalize. I still can't say it. Minimize or be minimal. Oh, never mind. Just go out there and make it happen. <laughs>